If you're new to the channel, if you're new to watching this kind of weekly review, I'm training for the Paris Olympics. I'm an Irish Olympian from Tokyo. I run 209 for the marathon. There's already been one weekly recap. So this is weekly recap number two in that journey to the Paris Olympics. And I did more of a background and a history in the previous video. And so this video will be much more to the point. How did the training go? If I was going to give you a direction and I was going to give you some advice, listen to what I'm saying, listen to how I'm reviewing my own week of training, but start to think for yourself, should I be doing this sort of review myself for my own training? And how could I benefit from listening to what Steven's saying? Bit of context. I used to coach athletes, and this is not a sales pitch to coach athletes because I wasn't, I wasn't giving my athletes enough. Um, I was actually a, not a bad coach. I knew what to set, but when you're still trying to run yourself, you, you'll appreciate this, when you're still trying to run yourself, you're very focused on your running. So when people listen to my podcast for you know years, and probably you guys listening to what I'm saying now, I appreciate that there will be some level of care, that you'll care a bit about how my training's going, a bit about how my race results potentially go. You'll care a little bit if I make the Olympics, but you're here to get better at running. You're here because you're hoping that shit, in a 20 to 30 minute conversation, I say something that you can relate to that then you can take to your own training and move forward. And so I used to coach athletes and like I said, this is not a pitch to get more people emailing to coach athletes. What they would do is they would email me at the end of the week and they would tell me how the training went. And a lot of them would openly admit half the reason they wanted to be coached by me was so that they could send me that email at the end of the week that said, hey Stephen, I did this. And the reason that email is so important is because of one very important word, accountability. I then set up this running school, which I would absolutely love to encourage people to have a look at. But within the running school, it was basically this like idea that how do I build a system that holds people accountable without having to pay me weekly or monthly to hold themselves accountable to that. And that's when we're gonna get on to my week because now I'm kind of holding myself accountable and you don't need to sign up to the running school to start doing some of this school, this stuff, sorry. But I set the running school up in a way that there's this kind of like point system and to break it down massively, it's just kind of giving yourself a score out of 10 at the end of each week. How did I apply myself to training this week? And so this is gonna be really fun as I go through these weekly recaps that I start to look at my own, but seriously, my piece of advice would be listen to what I'm saying, but relate it to your own training. Start to have a think, like I give myself a two out of 10 for gym, and I'm gonna get on to why, but start to have a think about your own training. What would you give yourself this week a score out of 10 for gym? I set this like, self-accountability system up because I'm very deep in terms of psychology, I'm very deep in terms of mental health, and I really wanted a system that started to get people thinking more about, hey, if my next training session doesn't go well, or my next race doesn't go well, I shouldn't be beating myself up in a way that says I'm not good enough, that says I don't have the talent, that says I'm too this, I'm too that. I should be beating myself up because if gym's a two out of 10 and recovery's a three out of 10 and I'm tired of my next session, is that my fault? That probably has nothing to do with talent or genetics. That kind of comes down to the fact that I skipped foam rolling on Tuesday, I didn't do my ice bath and I didn't go to the gym when I was supposed to go twice this week. That was the whole point of this self-accountability point system, and now I'm making that relatable to myself. Okay, weekly recap. <laughs> la, 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 la. Gym, two out of 10, mm, not ideal. Recovery, six out of 10. 
Not terrible, we'll get on to that, because I'll go through each. Training, 9 out of 10. Lifestyle, 7 out of 10, but it actually probably should be more like a 6, and we'll get to that. Sticking to the plan. I have a question mark. The reason there's a question mark is because I haven't actually like done a plan yet. Because I've been busy doing YouTube-y type stuff, and you'll appreciate how much content's been pushed out there, I'm spending my days on the laptop doing YouTube stuff in the past two to three weeks back into training, I'd have probably mapped out 15 plans at this point and ripped them up and did them again, ripped them up, did them again. So sticking to the plan this week, I'm actually kind of going to change that to make a plan, right? Make a plan. Miles, 70, weight, 156 pounds. This is kind of the first week that I weighed in and I got scales that um, track body fat and hydration. And so that's going to be really useful that during the weekly recap, it'll be like a Wednesday weekly recap and a Wednesday weigh in. So this week I was 156 pounds. Ideally, I think before I race my next marathon, I want to be 148 pounds. And so I have to lose about eight pounds, which isn't too bad. I did do a video day in a life eaten. I think it's good fun. If I'm being completely honest, I, I stagger my videos like this and, and I don't mind being honest. Some of my videos I do, I'm trying to grow the channel on YouTube. So it's very YouTube-y, it's flashy words, fancy transitions, sound effects. I probably overdid it. But you guys have got to understand, you got to do what you got to do. Some of my other videos are just purely educational. They're for guys that want to be better at running, really want to listen to what's being said because they appreciate 15 to 20 years of experience, Olympian, trained with world-class athletes, spent six or eight weeks up a mountain with Mo Farah. If you care about that kind of stuff, well then today's the kind of video that's gonna benefit you the most. But that is still a cool video, a day in a life eaten. But if you're really into your running and you really wanna get better, then you're likely probably better watching the video that's 20 to 30 minutes long explaining glucose and nutrition. You're gonna learn more. It's a bit more boring, but you're gonna learn more. And so, yeah, I hope you appreciate that. Um, speed, oh, okay, this is a new thing I've added. It says speed at two millimoles, two millimoles of lactate. There's heaps and heaps of videos on threshold that I've now done. I'm already nine minutes in, eight minutes in, and I haven't even got to the week. Speed at two millimoles, 3.30 per K. And the reason I've included that is because two millimoles for me is around about marathon. I am at altitude that wasn't wearing super shoes and we're gonna to get to that because as I go through sessions, on Monday I did 10 times a K in non-super shoes and I averaged 3.30 per K. On Saturday I did 10 by a K in super shoes and I averaged, drum roll, I'll tell you when we get to there in a little bit. The funny thing is, <laughs> that's a really cool thing to do on YouTube, like uh, if you keep watching, I'll tell you. But I do think it's quite funny that I haven't told you yet. We, we will get to there, that's Saturday. The other thing I wrote down here was this week of training was nine hours and 15 minutes. Last week was seven hours and seven minutes. And that's because this week I went on in my little closet I have a bike turbo and I have like a road bike on it and I cycle on what's called Zwift. Um, and I did two, so even though I ran 70 miles instead of 60 miles the week before, so I've done 10 miles more running because I actually took a full rest day, but we will get to that. But I did nine hours and 15 minutes. So I actually did two hours more aerobic training than the previous week. And I did 70 miles, not 60. So. You can do that. You can add volume by cross training. Very important. And, and we'll kind of get to that in literally just a second because we're about to talk about Monday. Um, nine hours, 15 minutes for this week. What's quite important is, and I had a look at this. It, it's something that I did like a 10K plan on the, the running school and I did a marathon plan. And again, not sales pitch, anything before any training plan, if you're gonna look at somebody else's training plan, if you're gonna follow a training plan, you must have a look at your last three to four weeks. And I looked at my last 16 weeks. You have to, you can't think, oh, I'm a 60 mile a week runner. Oh, I'm a 40 mile a week runner. Mm, you might be, but how's the last three, four weeks looked? How's the last four months looked? And so 
my last 16 weeks, I averaged four and a half hours per week of training. And obviously this week being nine hours, it's like double. At least I went seven hours and then nine hours. If I'm being completely honest, if I was to do a video called Born to Run, the thing that impresses me most about my body is its ability to do very little training and then very quickly jump back into full training. That's probably my greatest asset. When I was doing a session yesterday with Noble who helps me film this stuff, I actually told him that I need to start using that to my advantage. And what I mean by that is, don't take what I'm saying as arrogant or cocky, I am really robust. I was on the massage table today, Monica said, how are you doing? She hasn't seen me in a while. My body is a bit of a mess, my back, my hips. I need to start doing more gym. That's why gym's a two out of 10 and we're gonna to get to that. But I basically said to her, Monica, I can always run. No matter how sore things are, I'm lucky. That's, that's blessed. Why I need to start using that to my advantage? If anybody just seen or hasn't yet seen, Google, I think it's Killian Journey training and he does a breakdown of his yearly training. There's a lot of people putting in a lot of time, way more time than I am, way more aerobic training than I am. And maybe I need to start using this idea that I can handle quite a lot to my advantage. That'll be part of the plan and how do I, when I was during lockdown, I was probably running 70 miles a week, but I was biking about six, seven hours a week. And I think I brought my kind of like total aerobic training up to about 15 or 16 hours. Some of these iron men are doing 30. So if you want to win an Olympic medal, you want to do really well at the Olympic games. Yeah. How, how much are you willing to train? How much are you willing to put in? Okay. Let's go to Monday. I think I've got like 16 minutes in like 16 minutes time. The camera turns itself off. That's why last week, if you remember the video from last week, there was a lot of B roll at the end. The reason there was a lot of B roll is because I, I stopped filming. I didn't even know I'd stopped filming. I actually got really upset because I thought I'd lost the entire thing. That would be really upsetting. 30 minutes of talking gone, like a fart in the wind. Okay, let's go to Monday. So this week I gave myself a, okay, let's start with gym. I got two out of 10 in gym because I really didn't do any gym, but I did include like sometimes when you're doing warm up drills or like pre-run activation type stuff, I included some of that as gym, but how I would take that two to a 10 to an eight out of 10 is gonna be adding gym in. On that note, God, this feels like such a sales pitch weekly recap. It's really not, I promise you. On that note, I did hire a new gym coach and I've just sent them like um, reviews of, you know, he, he asked me to do gym tests. And so he asked me to do like some pogos, some squats, some lunges. Um, really cool guy, his name's George. He's actually worked in professional sports and, and professional rugby. I can't say which teams for, just know that I was very impressed. Um, I love that he asked me to send him some of these stuff, some of this movement stuff. And I actually just messaged him on Sunday to say, I was trying to explain to him that he's actually sent me a file that I really should go through. It's a PowerPoint. I did explain to him that my right hip had started giving me a bit of problems again. I get problems in the right side of my back, my right hip. When I sent him that text, he sent me back a video and, and showed me the movement when I was squatting down. There was obviously an imbalance on that right side. And so in his notes, he said, what did he say? Whatever you think. No, that's not what he said. All my notes on you are pointing to that right hip. I, I mean, maybe it was obvious. I don't really know if it was obvious, but you can actually check if you want to. His Instagram is Kinetico. Let me have a little look. I'll, I'll be quick because I really don't have massive amount of time. I run out really quickly. Oh no, come on, go back. Um, Kinetico, okay. Kinetico functional training. I don't make any money from this. It's not a sales pitch. If I ever sell anything to you on this, um, on like on my weekly recap, 
few things. If you sign up to the school and you don't like it, free refund. If you get advice off um, George and you go to Kinetico Functional Training and it's bad, I will fucking pay, excuse my language, for whatever you paid. I will never push something on any of these recaps or anything that I'm doing that I don't think would benefit. When I built the school, it was whatever, 12 hours of tips, 60 lectures, all this stuff. I always intended to bring in professionals that could give you a bit more than I can. I can tell you what I do, I can tell you how it's worked for me, I can tell you how it maybe got me to 209 and the Olympics and all this stuff, but I'm not a professional, I'm a professional runner, and that advice might be fantastic, but maybe there's layers here. If you go to that Kinetico Functional Train on Instagram, um, you'll see a lot of his videos. Really cool, there's lots of tips there, there's little things you can do at home, a lot of free stuff, and you know, if you wanna ask him some more stuff, his email is george, G-E-O-R-G-E -E, dot kinetico at gmail.com. He will do the exact same as he's just done with me, in terms of he'll give you um, tests to do. He sends you a video, it's a voiceover, it shows you what tests to do. He then watches your videos and gives you a specific program to start to counterbalance things that are going on. I should have sorted this stupid right hip out and pelvis ages ago. I have in 2012, a, I did a functional movement screening test and I was told the exact same in bloody 2012. Right hip, right hip, right hip. Mm. Two out of 10. Six out of 10 for recovery. <sighs> recovery could have been a little bit better because there was a couple of late nights, my sleep wasn't great. I, it took me 12 hours, 12 hours to edit the day in a life of eating. 12 hours. <laughs> that was a long day. I, I, that's why lifestyle and recovery got deducted some points because I, I, I can't do that. When this coach asked me, was running enough for me? Was I gonna focus on the training? Was I only gonna focus on the training? That's what he was referring to. We're still 16 months out, but I need to start being an athlete again. Yesterday, I was a athlete again. Yesterday, there was no editing, there was no film and stuff. It was just Stephen being an athlete, Normatex, um, infrared sauna, ice bath, etc., etc. So recovery gets a six out of 10 because I was doing the infrared sauna at night and then I was going straight into the cold exposure and that was really good, that was really useful, but I was a bit sloppy in terms of like lifestyle balance, in terms of working too much and not enough emphasis on, Stephen, you're a professional athlete, you're trying to make the Olympic games. Yes, it's great to put out YouTube content and stuff, but yeah, some days I'm gonna have to just calm down. I'm gonna have to actually set a, and, and listen up, because this might apply to you. I'm gonna have to set a limit. I'm gonna plan my days. So it's gonna be like training focus. I'll allow two to three hours in the afternoon, for example, for youtube type stuff and work and the running school and then back to running focus, and then perhaps at like 7 p.m., it's like after 7 p.m., all you are is a professional runner. Normatex, Epsom baths, foam rolling, do your rehab, stretch a bit, do a bit of yoga, go to bed. That's how I bring lifestyle and training up to 10 out of 10. So we did just lose a light, hopefully it's not too bad, maybe this will brighten stuff up a little bit. I'm just gonna keep rolling. Um, Sticking to a plan, I haven't done a plan yet. Let's get to the training because that's why hopefully you're here possibly. 10 by K threshold on Monday. I did 30 minutes on Zwift at night. The reason I was including Zwift stuff is because when I'm running at altitude, I couldn't keep my heart rate on. Fitness, I wasn't really fit enough yet. Kind of fitness, but when you're not bragging, when you're an Olympian and you're a two and nine marathon runner, one week of training and things move really quickly. So literally by the end of the week, I didn't need to do Zwift anymore because now when I was running, even at you know 640 pace, 650 pace, the heart rate had came down. So I couldn't keep the heart rate under sort of 150 and literally within two weeks, boom, it's came down. The Zwift was in there to take a bit of impact off the legs, not get injured, get on the bike. That's why cross training is so useful, but also so that I could do some very low heart rate training. Um, I'm gonna do this really quickly. Um, hopefully really quickly because time is valuable. Imagine that's your fitness curve. I talk about it in the threshold video. That's your fitness curve. 
Um, as the fitness curve goes up, so is heart rate. So heart rate on the left and it's going up. Very simple to understand. I like to train the entire spectrum. 120 to 130 heart rate, 130 to 140, 140 to 150, 150 to 160, so that I can move it to the right. I want to shift that fitness to the right. And so if I wasn't getting any 120 to 135 heart rate stuff, that's why I was on the bike. Pretty fast cadence, but not enough resistance that it kept the heart rate down. Perfect. I'd rather do that than go run super slow. Faster cadence felt just more appropriate to trying to race fast. Um, the 10 by K threshold, I did it without super shoes. I averaged 330. I gave myself a 10 out of 10 because I was willing to go slow. There was no ego, no bullshit. And I kept the lactate at two. 10 out of 10. Perfect. Speed, completely irrelevant. I just did a session yesterday. That 330 has already came down to 325. So six seconds quicker, same lactate same shoes, etc., etc., improved by six seconds. That's in the space of seven days. Not everybody's gonna improve that quickly. I did four and a half hours of training for four months. I usually do 10. My stuff is gonna develop quickly and you're gonna see that in these weekly recaps. And then it'll start to plateau and then I'll have to figure out ways to get better without um, having it easy, you could probably say. Tuesday, because Monday was only, sorry, so Tuesday I did really, really easy, but I did um, 12K in the morning, really slow. What speed did I average? I averaged 647 per mile. That evening I got on the bike again. Perfect, nothing stressful. The only goal was to recover. Because Monday was only lactate two, really, really easy, bottom end threshold, I only needed one easy day. And then on Wednesday, I could do a session, okay? Because it was only thresholdy type stuff. I only need one day to recover from thresholdy type stuff. So on Wednesday, I do 200 fast, 1K, kind of flow, but kind of easy. It probably should have been a little bit easier, but the 200 fast is around 30 to 32 seconds. This program, that session right there brings in a bit of speed and it brings in a little bit of lactate tolerance. Lactate tolerance, you hope in that first 200 meters that you bring your lactate up a bit, which you will, and then in that 1K easy, you're bringing it back down. Then you take 90 seconds rest, which gives everything a chance to settle, and then you do it again. Six reps of that, I got a 10 out of 10 that day. It was, mm, I'm gonna give seven out of 10. I probably went a little bit too quick on the 1K easy because of where fitness is and because of altitude, but six and a half out of 10. Thursday, Wednesday was hard. That's the first time that I've worked a bit harder. So Wednesday was, sorry, no, Thursday. Thursday was very easy, but I did run twice. I did eight miles at 640 per mile. And then in the evening, I did six miles at 735 per mile. I love an evening run because I go whatever speed I want. <laughs> Eight minute miles, doesn't matter. Slow it down, go nice and easy. Friday, this is where it was a bit different. So I've done my easy day after the harder day. Friday in the morning, I do a bit of a steadier run. So I average 620 per mile. And the goal is, remember I talked about trying to work that whole heart rate range. Instead of running at 130 to 140, I run at 140 to sort of like 150. And that's me just working the curve. I, I don't believe in gray areas or I, I want to work the whole curve and push the whole curve. I don't want to neglect parts of the curve. As long as you've had that easy day, don't try to do a steady day the day after a hard day. But you can do a steady day the day after a threshold day only if your next day is threshold again or it's an easy day. So don't go threshold, steady, hard. No. You can go threshold, steady, easy. Just, just be careful with how you're bulking the training. Saturday, I do 10 by a K. This is the moment of, you know, drum roll. I do 10 by a K and I'm so curious. I haven't been wearing super shoes. The reason I haven't been wearing super shoes is because I just, I wanted to feel unfit. I wanted to struggle. I wanted this to be hard. I wanted to remind myself that running's tough. I didn't want to take shortcuts. I'm gonna race in super shoes. I have nothing against super shoes. I fucking love super shoes. They're fast. 
but I just wanted training to be tough. I knew if I put the super shoes on, I'd feel pretty good. I might even get excited. And I literally put them on for one session and I was already thinking about a marathon in April. Um, I went from averaging 331 per K on Monday to Saturday I averaged 318. 318. <laughs> 318. That's 13 seconds per K. Luckily, when I did my session yesterday, I've realized that even in non-super shoes, I'm no longer 330, 331, I'm now like 324. So thank God it was only six seconds per K difference. It was overwhelming. 13 seconds is overwhelming. I had to come home and drink a beer. I am going to upload a YouTube video on that and I think it's going to be really funny comparing those super shoes and it appears that it's 13 seconds but it's not because like I said yesterday I did it again and, and I averaged 324 and so it's not quite 13 seconds it's probably like six and we already knew this but it was still quite overwhelming at the time. I'm going to quickly reset this video just to make sure I don't lose this and I'm going to get a drink of water. All right, so yeah, 13 seconds per K. It was... <laughs> if I can be bothered with the editing, I'm not saying I can't be bothered, this is quite a big effort already. Um, I'll add in my reaction to that 13 seconds per K. And it's me out the back garden drinking a beer like, ooh, I'm kind of a bit overwhelmed. I hope you can see that I was overwhelmed. Um, but I already knew one week, five days, six days won't change fitness. What's happening with me is not fitness. What's happening with me is it's just motor memory. My body's just remembering what it's like to run and run good. And, and that's going to be the biggest performance enhancements. The other thing that you can need to consider is that as you spend more time at altitude, so instead of seven days, maybe like 12 days, you, you acclimate to altitude. It also wasn't windy. And so 13 seconds was probably 10 seconds that day, but likely five to six seconds when, yeah, you consider that, um, Yesterday I did, you know, the same, the two millimole type stuff and, you know, I was 324. And yesterday was worse conditions than when I averaged 318 in the super shoes. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. I think in, on Thursday I do the same session, the two millimole stuff, and, and next week you'll get to see where it was at. But I, I've talked about that too much now. Um, mileage was 70, so I took a full rest day on Sunday because of that. I didn't want to jump too much. It would have went to like 80 and I thought 60 to 80 was a bit too much. I added in a lot more double days and this is a brilliant piece of advice. I used to sit and scheme. I used to call it scheming. I would sit and be like, hey, what could you do to make your plan better? Altitude tent, more massage, more physio. Should you be in the heat chamber? You know, float tank therapy, all this sort of stuff. I was like, well, what could you do to make your training plan better? And then I'd be like, how about you just go do your second run? How about you, you go to the gym? What I started doing this week that was so good was not make excuses for why I shouldn't go run again. Get out the door, get a run done. My brain is awful. I got a massage this morning and because I got a massage at like 9 a.m., it's the only appointment, appointment that was free, I haven't ran yet. And normally I would like skip that run because I think, oh, you shouldn't run after massage. That's just a, some silly rule that I put in my head. It's fine, get the work done. It's probably not perfect to run after massage, just like it's probably not perfect to run after gym. But let me tell you, it's a lot better to do the bloody run than to miss it. Don't miss training, don't skip training. This week, that's why it's a nine out of 10 because I did a bloody brilliant job of ditching the excuses and getting out there and getting a run done. Um, 
lifestyle, I need to slow the work stuff down a little bit and focus a bit more on recovery, a bit more rest and just calming things down and, and the running lifestyle can be a bit boring and that needs to be okay. I need to get used to that. The other runners that are on camp right now in Flagstaff, they will have watched every single series there is on Netflix. Oh, they'll have watched it all because that's all they're doing between training and rest and recovery, calming everything down. I'm doing a little bit too much work and so lifestyle can improve, but it has been good for me because it means I'm not overthinking the training and it also means that I'm not overanalyzing what I'm doing or how the fitness is improving or is it better than this time last year? Or There's none of that. That is useful, but not all the time. You can dedicate one to two hours to sit and go through all that kind of stuff, but don't do it all the time or your brain just gets tired. Um, my weight is 156. I'm really impressed by that. I think when I ran 209, I was like 153. So it's only three pounds. But when I watched a video that I released on YouTube today, and it was um, Monday, something about Mondays, Mondays Am I Right? Or How to Be Mentally Stronger? I think it's one or the other. Um, I'm a wee bit top heavy. Surfing, paddling, I gain muscle quite quickly. It's probably why my back's a mess. Um, but yeah, that's something that I'll keep giving you guys updates on. Um, in terms of losing the weight, I, I don't have any secrets for you. The secrets are discipline. Get in the ice bath, get in the cold exposure, literally finish every shower that you have with 20 to 30 seconds of cold exposure. Show yourself that you can do it. Show yourself that you can be disciplined and then make good decisions with your food. My best piece of advice on that actually is start to think food more of a what does my body need physically and not what do I want like emotionally. It's not dopamine. Food is not like dopamine. We treat it that way. But you know, literally you're, you're eating to give your brain what it thinks it wants. But a lot of the time that's like, I want a big bag of Haribo, I want a muffin, I want a dairy milk bar. And you'll even think I must need that because I'm craving it. No, not if you want to lose weight. And so my losing weight plan, there is no plan except for make good choices. That's it. I can eat as much as I want as long as it's a good choice. And that's really simple. And speed at two millimoles. Even though I put 331, oh, I put 330. It was actually 331. And I think it's actually 325 because we're, we're still going non super shoes. In super shoes, it was 318 average. 318.5, the sessions on Strava, executed it beautifully. And I think my lactate was 2.4 and then 2.1. I'm putting 325 because that's what it is in non super shoes. And I'm probably not gonna wear super shoes that much at all. And the next time I do fitness test, then I will. And that's gonna be in It'll be part of the plan, but there's going to be that fitness test that I did in Phoenix where I did the five or six times 2K. And I'll do that every four or five weeks just to check in with like, are things progressing? And as long as things are progressing, it's all good. But then I'll have to look at it. And the only final thing that I have to say is it was a, it was a good three weeks. Wait, three weeks? It was a good week. The reason I said three weeks is because on Friday I've been at altitude for three weeks. And they sort of say that's like the minimum amount you should do. My tip is if you find a good rhythm, I'm in a bloody great rhythm. Infrared sauna sitting right there. My bike is sitting right there with a the turbo. The shower is cold enough right now that it's an ice bath because of the snow. I have such a good rhythm. And so my advice is if you do find a good rhythm, hold on to it, keep it, protect it. When it says stick to plan, the plan's kind of non-existent. The reason there wasn't a plan is A, I've been quite busy, and B, I didn't have a passport. So very difficult to nail a plan down when you don't even know if you'll be allowed to fly. And now today, well, I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna go do my run on the treadmill, nice and easy. Um, and then I'm gonna do a plan that will map out how I'd like the next, probably eight to 10 weeks to go 
The next eight to 10 weeks is still all about the body stuff. So working with the strength coach, working with the physiologist to see that fitness gradually improve. We're gonna see the fitness improve just by running. We're gonna see the fitness improve. Let's say speed improve because of losing a bit of weight. And then we're probably gonna get the eight, eight to 10 weeks and we're gonna to start to see it stagnate a little bit. And that's when really dialing in a plan will become super important. How do you attack the body in new ways to sort of get rid of that stagnation? Because it will stagnate. And then you start attacking it in different ways, adding races in, changing the gym a little bit, changing the stimulus and training. You can't just keep doing the same repetitive stuff or it likely won't improve. Um, that's all. That's my weekly recap. We're still in that focused state, still heading towards Paris. I'm believing more and more that I can do it, um, which is really exciting. Um, I've always known I can do it. It's that like, I told you that quote about the matrix. I'm starting to see it. Not just see it, I'm starting to apply myself in the way that I should be. If I slow the work stuff down a little bit, then I'll be really chuffed because I know this is gonna take everything I've got. Don't, don't confuse me knowing that I can do it with believing yet that I'm gonna do it. I know I can do it. I believe in my capabilities, but I do need to start showing myself that I'm willing to make the sacrifices that are necessary. Guys, thank you so much for listening. I really, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, throw some comments below. Like, subscribe. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Lion Skull. And yeah, also, like I said, if you want to check out the school, the free courses, all sorts of stuff on there, activation stuff, gym stuff, recovery stuff, the self-accountability stuff. Um, I think the master class is recovery, nutrition, psychology, strength conditioning, and then running specific. And so if you don't really know how to give yourself a score out of 10 because you don't know what you would have added into recovery gym, blah, 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 go have a look. There is some free lectures. I'll add some more. I'll make sure that in each section, there's at least one free lecture or two. Um, but within each section, there's about 10 to 15 lectures. Um, but yeah, I hope you don't mind me throwing that little bit of waffle in. Full transparency. This school keeps me going. I didn't take funding this year from Ireland. Um, I wanted to do this for me. So the running masterclass and it's paying for Noble's wages, who comes out and videos me and stuff. Um, and, and it just keeps this sort of journey and dream alive. Um, but again, I wouldn't even sell you my own products if I wasn't willing to give a refund if it wasn't as good as I'm saying it is. I really appreciate you listening. Like, subscribe. Take care and have a great week of training. Thank you much for joining me in today's video. If you like this style, go to joggingroom.com. There's over 12 hours of tips, tutorials, ways to be better at running and enjoy life more. Check that out. You might find a course on there that you really like and something that will help your running and race results improve.